5G is changing the way that telcos manage their network assets from investment planning, um, asset construction, deployment, um, operation, but also maintenance and up to retirement. What are these changes and also the related challenges and the new innovations to address them? Gary Penn, he is the global solution expert at SAP and is here to talk us through all the latest network asset management developments. Welcome, Gary. Yeah, thank you, Rono. So the 5G era brings all kinds of new challenges for telcos to manage and to monetize and network assets. Can you elaborate on that? I think uh, with 5G, telcos are seeing lots of new assets in their network. Another key thing is, uh, you know, to control the level of capex while uh, reduce the opex of the network. And uh, the main challenges we see is, uh, you know, really the broken processes from planning your capital spending, planning the network deployment, execution, and then the O&M of the assets. Um, there's the lack of visibility, um, siloed um, communications, uh, inaccurate information on the status of the assets, for example. And uh, there's also a disconnection between the technical process and then the financial and the supply chain process. So the CTO team of the telco and then the supply chain team of the telco, they manage the same set of assets uh, with their different perspectives and their different own systems. And the, the disconnections in between are causing problems like uh, uh, low utilization and high maintenance cost. Um, but of course, as we see, we believe 5G is also an opportunity a key driver for telcos to transform the way they manage their asset lifecycle and to be ready for the 5G rollout. And you were addressing 5G. 5G brings big changes to the network asset management. So what kind of changes do you see in the market? And do you have any type of tips on how telcos can deal with these type of changes? Yeah, I think uh, with 5G, there are several big changes as we see. So first of all, the, the simplicity of the network asset. So with 5G, there's uh, also the fixed mobile convergence. So from asset management perspective, uh, there's an opportunity to uh, really consolidate and standardize the management of your network, uh, the mobile and the fixed network. So really an opportunity to really simplify the landscape. Um, then another big change is uh, the software assets. So with 5G, and also SDN, NFV, uh, more and more network functions are realized through software. So from an asset management perspective, uh, this means telcos needs to manage a very large number of software assets, uh, not just from accounting perspective, but also uh, the right to use uh, which software licenses could be applied to which hardware and also the authorization of those software and also how to evaluate the performance of uh, these uh, virtual network functions based on software assets, what is the profitability of these um, uh, virtual functions? Um, and the other big change is uh, what we call the vertical disintegration. So the decoupling of uh, tower operation, infrastructure operation from the telcos, uh, like what it is happening in Europe. And uh, also there are some government initiatives uh, uh, in Asia, in Central America to set up state-owned entity to run 5G network. So now the telcos need to work with players like uh, Towerco, Fiberco, Netco to deliver the 5G services to the end customer. And then the focus here would be to you know, streamline and the, uh, the streamline the com communication and the collaboration uh, across these different players along the life cycle of the network asset. Yeah. A series of, of substantial changes. On the other hand, we have, of course, innovations. So innovations in this field follow each other at rapid order. And can you tell us what are the most recent innovations in network asset management that you see in the market? Yeah, I think uh, uh, for us, um, uh, of course, for SAP, the financials, the supply chain, the procurement, you know, the capital project, the asset lifecycle has been the bread and butter for us in telco along the years. Um, but lately, we've been also focusing on uh, innovations, for example, um, the business networks, uh, which uh, consists of the, the asset network, uh, the logistics network, and the, the supplier network. So with these network services, we want to 
you know, bring all the relevant players in this ecosystem together, uh, streamline the collaboration and also with integration to the uh, asset procurement and supply chain processes, which are being managed in SAP mostly. And uh, as mentioned already, across this uh, network asset lifecycle, telcos needs to work with these many different industry players. So the business network would be very relevant for them. Um, and, and then uh, the digital twin has also been something we've been focusing on and also something we see a uh, hot topic in the market right now, you know, leveraging new technologies like uh, uh, drones, uh, 3D photogrammetry, uh, IoT remote monitoring, so really to create a digital depiction of the telco sites and then potentially also linking it to the financial and the technical information from SAP systems. So there are lots of scenarios on top to really improve the e efficiency utilization and, the, and the reduce the cost. Um, and lastly, uh, from SAP, we've been also focusing on providing uh, innovations by working with solution partners, focusing on the telco vertical. Uh, so a few examples, including uh, partner solutions in the area of uh, telco tower and the site operation, um, also telco reverse logistics, so for repair and the refurbishment of uh, telco equipment and the devices, and also um, energy management and energy consumption optimization, uh, since sustainability has been a top issue for telco right now as well. So the idea here is really to um, extend our solution coverage by working with uh, solution partners with uh, vertical capabilities here. Yeah. Thank you, Gary, for sharing all these great new innovations, but also, of course, all the developments in the network asset domain. Thank you. And for the audience, thank you for watching. And we look forward to seeing you next time.